Okay. Today we will gonna discuss the tax issues in China. China has a major tax problem or few tax problems. Most of them stems from the fact that China is both the second largest economy in the world with advanced financial system and inter and international trade network, and also having a large informal economy. China's economy demand level of government spending, which requires large and broad tax base to fund its country, but unfortunately they don't have. United States, with China's closest peer and economic size, has a federal tax revenue of 17% of GDP, or 25% when you include all local and state revenues. In China, it has revenues of only 9%. But here we are only talking about higher or lower taxes. But we are looking in the systematic issues that China will have to overcome to stop living on a borrowed time and create sustainable system to fund its government activities. We need to look at some specific issues. Why has China been unable to value more taxes from its economy? Is this low tax revenue going to hurt its economy? Or is there anything that can do to fix the issue? We have done all of this we can put China the second largest economy in the leaderboard. China's tax problem is really three problems that can collect taxes from most people. The people they collect tax from do good jobs of avoiding taxes and tax they collect don't always go where they need it. China operates of a central authority but no single man or institution can oversee the operations of 1.4 billion people, the largest country in every metric. That's why the government authority is shared amongst provinces with their own sub-provincial regions and cities within these regions. Local authorities are in charge of certain government functions that are too small or regionally specific to be controlled by the government organization. Above them, it doesn't make sense for the People's Party Congress to be managing the trash collected schedule of a hanging. So they delegate to the provincial government body who will probably delegate to city council. It is exactly the same most of the government around the world opted to perform their function. Big difference in the way that they get their funding. Most developed economies, local government, get their funding through combination of property tax and money coming from more senior level of government. The federal government give money to the state and the state give money to the local government. They may also have alternative revenue sources like parking tickets, business fees, but those are irrelevant compared to these two. China's local government are a little bit different. They make most of their money by taxing businesses and selling off 20 to 70 years leases on their land holdings. In China, no private company or citizen can own urban land. So recently, renting it out for 70 years is the best thing. 60% of these local governments make from business needs to be returned to the central government, but the land revenue are all there. This is a very significant revenue source because real estate market in China is absolutely massive. Land lease revenues is only work if the land is worth developing. Land is only worth developing if there is some kind of infrastructure in place to support the people that will be living in these new developments. The solution to this is that the provincial governments are consistently in an armed race against one another to build out more infrastructure so they can make themselves economic hubs so they can sell off land rights. This game of chicken and egg does two things. The first is that it creates a glut of infrastructure, both cities and railways that carry no passengers are not uncommon sight in China. 
The second thing is that its necessities are all a lot of upfront investment that by these provincial governments. The problem is that these governments are not allowed to issue bonds and they don't start making land revenues until they sell off their land holdings. So they need to get creative. They have come up with what is called local government financing. It is a pretty dodgy to understand what these local governments do. They set up a private company and then give that company some of their state assets that can be cash shares and state enterprise or the land rights that they are trying to sell off. This supposedly private companies can then go to the bank and use all of these assets as collateral to get the loans. Local governments can uh, then use this cash to fund whatever infrastructure projects demand. And banks can bundle these loans up and sell them as bonds on the open market. In 2019, local government financing bonds constituted 39% of all outstanding bonds in China domestic market. In other 60% was made up of real estate bonds sold by the development companies that need funding to build on the land that was being leased out to them by these local governments. These local government financing platform bonds are quite safe because they indirectly have back backing of communist party and it's unthinkable for the many Chinese investors that the government will would default on their debt. This also has a benefit of pushing government debt into the private sector so national debt to GDP figure work better than they really should. The problem is that these are local governments, not national governments, and they have chance of going bankrupt because they have limited revenue raising potential. So far, this whole system hasn't been an issue because the real estate market has appreciated in value. So most reckless borrowing practices can be wiped away with the money that is made by leasing out this land. But the precarious status quo is starting to come undo for the stakers. China is still participating in strict lockdown to stop the spread of COVID-19. The government has adopted zero case policy which means even entire cities are as large as Shanghai will go to complete lockdown. These lockdowns ban people from leaving their homes for any reason outside of getting groceries, so business are obviously suffering a lack of business. Lack of business activities, cut off revenues for local Chinese government and that's before we get into the problem in real estate sector. The unwearing confidence the Chinese people once had in real estate will be wing off the back of high profile property development bankruptcy. This means that less people want to invest in properties, which means less are getting built less and getting less revenues from the renting out land holdings. It also means that banks are no longer interested in accepting these bonds, these land holdings as collateral to underwrite the bonds from these local government financing platforms. To make this worse, Chinese central government has started issuing tax returns to compensate citizens from being locked, ho locked in homes while pushing for more infrastructure projects to offset the economic impact that lockdown caused in the first phase. This means that less money coming in and more going out and less options to raise money to bridge the financing gap in the meantime. Now, if high, highly speculative financial assets that are too safe to fail because they are backed by real estate in the market that has been booming sounds familiar you, to you than this should. Probably makes you a little bit worried to top this all of almost all bonds issued in China are rated at least double and local 
government financing bonds are almost exclusively rated at triple i which suggests to investors that these are the safest possible investments this is 19 trillion bond market that is based on a system that requires perpetual growth you might have been thinking that should this market include speculatively well that would be bad but the central nation, national government would step into the bail these local governments out if for no other reason than to serve, save the reputation of their own pro, pro, uh, poverty chinese bond market is massive the total value of global mortgage backed securities market is 11 trillion dollars and in many ways that market was better regulated this market is significantly larger than china's entire gdp and this is all to say nothing of the other big problem of with how the chinese government handle land 20 to 70 years lease eventually come to an end and some of these shorter leases have now started to expire which is presenting the government with a problem that do they that do they do with land now the traditional agreement was that this land would be go back to government but that idea is unpopular amongst people that will be kicked out of their homes and stripped of their largest investment a widespread brief, brief is that growing among china's citizen that land will never be taken back once these leases expire because it would simply be too politically unpopular the real estate market also support this way of thinking homes with 20 years left on their on their land lease cost the same as homes with 70 years left to them all other things being equal why could anyone pay some prices for a home that they can only live for only 20 years where there is a similar property available that can live in for 70 years well because they don't expect that these leases will ever come to an end building standards in open china mean that these buildings probably won't last that long anyway this status further confused by a new law proclaim that residential land rental would be automatically renewed but failed to mention if they would be renewed for fee or if land holders would need to pay for a new lease if the government does cave of choosing the extended land rentals forever with no further fee then the would have cut themselves off from one of their primary revenue sources this leads us an other problem china has with taxes people don't pay them china does uh, china does have progressive income taxes ranging from 3 up to 45 depending on how much citizens earn but don't people don't pay this most chinese have are or still employed in informal economy running small stores working on farms or jobs that are paid with cash in hand people on other end of the financial spectrum really get their income from paychecks and instead are able to funnel it through businesses and other assets which can massively reduce their tax burden only narrow minority are wealthy having formal jobs while not being wealthy enough to have to the means to avoid tax that end up paying it the problem they is they can't generate taxes of 20% of a population not only does the leave that leave an unfair burden on the worker who are genuinely paying taxes and not hamper the government's ability to raise regular tax revenues it also fundamentally limits the government's control over the economy A lot of focus has been placed on monetary policy in light of high inflation but fiscal policy as in the rising of lowering of taxes and government spending is just as not running an effective economy increasing taxes can be very effective to curb inflation but tax 
break is effective if people who are paying taxes to be with if the government fails to levy tax on majority of population this control mechanism is ineffective managing economy without broad control over tax base is trying to land a jumbo jet by flapping a hand fan growth in china has been unbelievable it's almost hard to imagine a time now when china's wo- wasn't super economic power but its economy has economy has more than double in size since 2010 No other economy thinks to come close to China. Finally, China has got positioned by being the workshop of the world that they have developed from being a center of the low cost. Low cost manufacturing where foreign companies could take advantage of cheap labor. Country had advanced financial system, healthy domestic market and globally recognized local company. they are in producing high stuff like air uh, airlines altogether this gives china average score of 8.2 out of 10 which put it into a second place on economic explained national leadership cross if you like the video please subscribe to the channel learn economics and share it with others happy learning